Uh, hello everybody. Um, <clears throat> it's 3:15 a.m. over here, and I feel in the mood to make a video for you guys, and this is gonna be a good one. So I'm gonna get right into it. So, what we're gonna be doing is learning about timers in Allegro, and timers will allow us to regulate the frames per second. And what the frames per second will allow us to do is to be able to make the game run the same speed on every computer. If you know how to export an exe um, an executable file um, from your computer, which I haven't taught yet, but if you learned on your own and you say made a game on a laptop and you tried to run it on a desktop computer, a desktop PC, and it most likely the game would run much too fast right so um they needed a way to be it would run too fast because a uh, pc has like a sh more powerful processing unit so it would run things too fast so then they're like we need to find a way to make it run same speed on every single computer right so then that's where frames per second comes in it regulates at a certain pace um, and then it will run it at the same speed on every single computer. So, um, we, you know how we had the rest function? Well, it wouldn't cut it for us because the rest, um, could like pause. It would pause for the same amount of time, but the program would run at different speeds on different computers. So, this is where frames per second comes in. And if you really don't understand what I'm talking about, you'll see what I mean in a second. So, First, we got um above our main statement. Uh, let me zoom in here. Oh, sorry. I accidentally compiled the program. <sighs> it's a wasting time. Okay, whatever. It didn't run. Okay, good. So um, first we have to make a volatile long, and name it counter and equal to zero. And what a volatile means is that the it tells the compiler that it's going to be changed by like the processing unit or something like that. It's a value that's going to be changed. Okay. And long is like the type is specifier much like int and double. And now we need to make a function. And the function is going to increment um, the counter. So might as well increment. And there's going to increment counter by one every single time and that's that for now so after the declarations after you declare your variables we have to lock the variable in the function now I don't know why this is I read that it's not really needed but it has something to do with the DOS window but I think that you should still do it because it's good programming practice so to do this put lock underscore variable easy enough and then we put the variables name in there so we took the variable name counter and we put it in there easy enough so lock the function and as you guess the same thing so the function name is increment so we put increment in there so now we're gonna put install int ex and we just have to put the function's name in here, increment, and then we're gonna put BPS2 timer, and then our value in here. And I want to explain to you what this means. So if you know Windows um 32 programming, um, where when we program in Allegro, we do Win32, but we don't really get into Win32. Well, if you know if you know Win32, the ex just means that it's the updated version. If you just did install int underscore int, then that'd be like the older version. So make sure you do install underscore int underscore ex. That's why when you do the text out underscore ex, that's just the newer version of Win32. So we'll just use that. Remember that. So then, what does BPS a timer mean? Well, um, first thing, what is BPS? Um, that means beats per second. And the number um, in here basically says how much ticks, 
happens per second. So it's basically telling the computer that, um, say if we put a hundred a hundred ticks per second, that on every single computer it will tick a hundred times per second. That's all run the same speed on every computer, right? So on every computer, for every single second, it has to tick one hundred times. No more, no less. It has to tick a hundred times. So then that's why even if the computer is too fast. Right, it will still it will slow down to go 100 times per second, which is why we need to use um timers. When before when we just use the rest function, it would go as fast as it could. Then when we reach the rest, it would rest for however you said. Then it would go as fast as you could, right? So depending on the computer, it would go faster or slower. With this, it has to go a certain amount of times. So then. Now that we got that set, we have to implement it into um, our program. And if you didn't understand what I said before, um, you might understand it later on in the video. So keep watching. So remember how we always put our while and our not done statement um, in order to for our game loop. Well, inside that game loop, we have to add another while loop. So while and our variable name counter is greater than zero and what this is going to contain is everything that you a uh, our regular while loop would except for the blitting function to blit to the screen so um this is going to have all the key presses all the background images everything except for blitting to the screen and with the frames per second, you don't need the clear bitmap or anything like that. You don't need a rest function. You take away the rest because the beast per section per second will do that for you, right? So no rest. And I'm not sure if you would um um no rest and no clear bitmap. Now I never tested to see if you actually really needed clear bitmap. But I always used it because that's just how I learned how to, to um, program in Allegro. So I'm not sure if you actually need that in your programs, but with frames per second, you don't need it anymore. So now that we got that, um, at the end of the second um, while loop, the one with the counter is greater than zero, you have to decrement it by one. And decrement it means just decrease it, right? So we try to decrease it by one. And then that's how we do our frames per second, right? So um, now you'll be like, you'll be wondering, um, what number should I put in here? Well, basically, the higher the number, the faster the game runs. Why? Because if the game goes a hundred times a second, that means it'll be updating how many times a it'll be updating a hundred times a second. And then I'll be updating like how many times a minute, then how many times whatever, right? So then, um, if you put a less, a uh, lower number, so you put one, right? It only updates one time a second, so it only updates sixty times a minute, right? But if you do a hundred, then it updates a hundred times a second. That means it loops that much times, right? That means the game will run faster. So um, as an example, I'll show you this. So, um, basically, so my game that I showed you in the game development um, part three, in that video I just posted, and um, basically, I'm saying once player is standing up, I want the beats per second to be ten, and once they're running for the attack, when they're going for the attack, it goes at twenty, so it goes slightly faster. So let me show you what it looks like. And I changed the video up. I didn't have timer. I didn't have timer up. I just put it up like a couple minutes ago. So as you can see, it's walking at a moderate. Um, the person's walking at a walking at a moderate pace. When you click attack, it goes fast. Then it goes back to the regular pace. So now the reason why I did this is because 
when um if you notice when the person's not attacking it's walking in, in the same spot now i don't want his, his legs to be moving like super fast right i want him to be moving at a moderate pace and if i want a more realistic one i could put five or something now look if i put 50 it's going to go 50 times per second so then once you run this If you can see, I don't know if the um, the recorder will pick this up, but if you see it, from my view, the legs are moving super fast. Like it's going so fast, right? And I don't want that. So then let me put that back to 10. So then say I put this to 80. Okay, so when he's running for the attack. Sorry. Okay, so when you run for attack, see how fast I went? Because it was 80, it goes faster than normal. Right? So then, the higher the number is, the faster your game runs. Now, if you're not doing like a battle system like this, like you're doing like a regular game, right? And you do um whatever and you're doing walking or you're doing like a regular game it's better to have a higher beast per second because the faster it is the more fluent your game is right but once you're doing something like this you probably don't want it to be too high right so that's it um i might be doing more of um, a longer video on this just to explain it more in the next video um so thanks for watching and I hope you look forward to my next video. And bye.